algal blooms are when phytoplankton or algae proliferate. They grow in great abundance and they lead to this bloom, this really dense accumulation of algae. We consider it harmful when those algae that are growing produce toxins. The harmful algal blooms are a really large issue in Florida. There's two different kinds of blooms that we get. So out on the west coast of Florida, we get what are called red tides, which is one type of algae and one type of toxin. But then across the freshwater all across Florida, so Lake Okeechobee and all the waterways connected, canals all throughout Florida, we get these blue-green algal blooms. So they produce a different kind of toxin. The main toxin that we're concerned about is called microcystin. And that toxin gets into the water, which means it can also get into seafood that lives in that water. And it also gets into the air. That's a pretty big concern for health because we can avoid eating local seafood, but it's hard to avoid, you know, breathing the air, especially for residents in Florida that live near some of these bodies of waters, that live near canals and these lakes and these, and these rivers. How do they avoid the exposure if this stuff is getting into the air? That's what we have been working on is what are the preventative measures that we can take to make sure that it's not impacting the air we breathe, particularly indoors for residents that are near these bodies of water. It's a really big public health issue, not just here in South Florida, but also on the West Coast and across really all the coastlines. Those toxins can cause digestive issues, respiratory issues, Microcystin, this, this toxin that's really abundant in these blue-green algae, in particular impacts the liver and can potentially cause neurological problems down the line as well. The public should be educated about these harmful algal blooms and what their risks are. So there has been things on the news, but it's really important specifically to know how you can prevent having some kind of health issue because of your outside environment of where you live, of where you work. Even if you are a tourist and you're visiting, you should know what your risks are. We're funded by the Florida Department of Health and our project had two goals. One is looking at the long-term health impacts for people in Florida from these algal blooms. So that's where working with our scientists at the, at the medical campus, we've recruited a lot of participants from people across Florida, where we're looking at different health markers and measuring the water that they're being exposed to. And then we wanted to find ways for people to reduce their exposure. So we took a laboratory experiment approach to this, and we wanted to look at if there were ways that people could filter that air that they're breathing and reduce the toxins that are in that air. What we found is that the, the toxins do get aerosolized, but that certain masks and filters are actually pretty good at limiting the exposure that we would have to those toxins. Our study is kind of providing a solution. What can we do about it? And what we find is that preventative measures like what we're doing right now with wearing masks actually work pretty well also for harmful algal bloom toxins. And then also just taking good care of your air conditioning system. So if you have like a window AC system, we found that putting in the right filters is gonna be really key for minimizing your exposure. Bottom line is in the peak periods during the year when we know that the algorithms are really high, but to inform people that if they are near, that they should be wearing a mask. If you live near these areas, that you should be changing your filters on a regular basis. These are all easy ways that can decrease your risk of having health issues. We're really excited to, to be able to provide this evidence that face masks and high efficiency home air conditioning filters are an effective way to reduce personal exposure to blue-green algal toxins.